Hi, it's Edward Mendoza, and today I want to cover what I consider some of the best preparation that you can have before getting into the OMS CS program if you don't already have a strong uh, CS background or already have the degree. Coming up. Chronos Matrix, focus on what matters most. Visually keep your goals in check and create new goals so you can stay on schedule. Watch your daily, weekly, and monthly results to stay focused. Free time optimization app. And welcome back. Even though this might look like it's just a background, one of those like 3D screens, I'm, a, I'm actually here. <laughs> I don't know. Right now that uh, the background has a, a strange, almost like fake look to it. Those are actual leaves on, on, on the ground. I like changing locations. It um, it definitely helps me when it comes to uh, to studying or, or, or working, just being in a, a different environment. But I usually don't live in the same place for, for too long, so I'm constantly on the move. So you'll, you'll be seeing lots of different backgrounds as uh, as the uh, the weeks uh, progress and I do more of these videos. So anyway, down to the uh, subject at hand. Um, I have an art degree, right? I had a, a, a bachelor's in multimedia, which is technically um, an art degree. And even though there was a couple of courses there that were um, computer related, I didn't feel at all that I was going to be prepared for the for uh, the OMS uh, CS um, program. So what I ended up doing is I went back to, uh, um, it was actually three different community colleges. I went to Pasadena, um, Santa Monica College, and Glendale to get the courses that I would have taken had I you know, gone for a, a computer science degree. Now this doesn't mean everybody has to go that route. I've met a couple of individuals in, in, the, in the course already who they also had some form of art degree or there was one person who was, uh, who was like a psych major. You know, we, we change our, our career paths and they kind of felt like they could learn as they, uh, they went along. And it definitely, definitely took a much longer to, uh, to finish the, the, um, the degree plan that way. But I mean, you're still gonna take time either way, right? If, it, if you don't have a strong uh, computer science background, it's, it's going to be a very, very difficult time for you to go from not understanding how to truly program to go through a, you know, coursework that's so rigorous as the, uh, as the Georgia Tech online um, education. It doesn't matter what you're what you're taking. Even if you're taking OMS uh, OMS A, there's a um, there's a new wing of um, of an on online degree for uh, that Georgia Tech is offering for uh, um, online marketing in uh, in analytics. I'm not really going to cover that because I haven't taken any other classes, so I don't know. But even in, in those courses, for what I've seen you know, from uh, Bayesian uh, statistics, they have a lot of like heavy math courses. So. I mean, if you have already have a, um, a pretty strong uh, background in, in um, with math courses, right? Then you'll be kind of okay, and you'll probably be able to pick up the uh, the pace um, faster. But for those of us that you know we have some kind of art background, just, just non-technical as far as uh, a computer science goes, it's it's definitely highly highly recommended for you to take um, take courses before. Now they do say that you don't have to have. Uh, as long as you have a bachelor's degree, it doesn't have to be in computer science or mathematics in order to be accepted. And based on that, I've seen several people in some classes where from day one, they're like, um, uh, I don't know how to program, not I don't know how to program in this language, like I don't know how to program. Um, how do I, you know, you know, stay ahead in this class? And I'm thinking, there's no way they're going to pass this. So it, it's usually like first term kind of students. And I haven't stayed in touch with uh, with quite a few of these individuals so i don't know if they just dropped out after a couple semesters or they just decided to study on the side while they were already in the program because i mean once you're in you have a, a full six years to get through the uh, get through the program i don't think they're gonna be changing that anytime soon i don't think they're gonna be lowering uh, those amount of years or, or increasing it for now but i mean six years even if you have no idea of what you're doing Six years is more than enough time because in two to three years you can get the background that you need and if you just take class after class, right, say it's, it's uh, you, you take a class, you drop out uh, before the withdrawal period 
and then you um, you know you, you study that course, you sign up for it the, you know the following semester, and then you take it again. You could literally do that in in the several subjects that you're that um, that you're just not strong in, and you could technically learn that way. I would highly recommend if you've already got accepted in the program and then you realize after the first uh, semester or two that you, you're, you just don't have the background that they're, uh, that, you know, they're expecting, to take a semester off. So take a semester off, study, because all the lectures are online. They tell you what books they're going to be using. You can look at the questions in the book and practice that way. Take a semester off, prepare for that class, and then sign up for that class for the following semester if you're already in. If you're not in, I highly, highly recommend to do what I did. Just go back to school. I know it feels kind of awkward, you know, after being out of, out of uh, uh, college or university for several years to go back and, right, you, you'll more likely be one of the older uh, people in class. I mean, I literally saw some guys that they, they must have been hitting 50 or 60. And, you know, and they're in the class and they're, I mean, it was definitely the minority, but I mean, it's, it's not that big of a deal. It's being around other people. You have to also understand that this, I've already covered that in, a, in, a, in another video. This is one of the most isolating experiences you're going to have. So being around other students, talking to other uh, professors, asking all your questions to people in real time is going to be invaluable. So even with that, it still took me almost like kind of like a year to, to, um, to really kind of prepare and psych myself up for what the, uh, for what, what OMSES was going to be like. So I highly, highly recommend going uh, back to the community college or university. I would say community college because it's much cheaper and it's easier to sign up. You, you, there's not so much, um, um, so many documents, right, that you have to uh, um, show. I mean, some of these universities, it's like, it's, it's a whole application process. Community college, you can sign up within a couple of days. So what classes do I recommend before I you know, go too much off topic, right? Um, it doesn't matter what your area is going to be, whether it's going to be computing systems, if it's going to be the machine learning, the interactive intelligence uh, um, specialization. Most of them have very similar courses anyway, but overall, I think if you just take these several courses that I'm going to uh, name now, you're kind of covered either way that, that you go, right? And you're going to be a much stronger computer scientist anyway. So um, I recommend on the math side, they say you need up to Cal 3. It depends on what state you are. Some states you have to take up to Cal 3 in order for you to uh, be allowed to take linear algebra, which makes no sense to me at all, but it just depends on uh, the state you're in. Um, I thought this was, it was only California, uh, uh, um, only in Texas that they, that, uh, uh, that they didn't uh, force you to take up to Cal 3, but it, then I found out it depends on the school. So anyway so if you need if you need up to cal 3 to take linear algebra then just do it that way right um so based on state i would i would say if you don't have to take cal 2 and cal 3 because it's they're so difficult especially uh, uh multivariate calculus it's <laughs> these are really really difficult uh math courses and if you're going to in other areas of engineering well you know, definitely if you're, if you're going to be doing intense machine learning, it's obviously going to help. The more math, the better. But if you don't really see yourself in, in those areas, you know, really, really intensely going towards the, uh, the hard mathematical uh, proofs, it, having up to Cal 3, I think, is, is very unnecessary. But, you know, if you have the time to do it, um, go ahead. Um, so up to either Cal 1 and Cal 3, depending on what um, this, uh, uh, the state that you're in, what, what, they recommend before taking linear algebra. Linear algebra, I would say, uh, the first time I took uh, linear algebra, I went to, <laughs> it was a really, really difficult theoretical base. I would say, do the applications base. I literally dropped out and I took it at, at, a, at a, another school because you're not gonna be doing so much of the theoretical stuff initially. I, I mean, some classes, I, I guess you would be, but I would say, even if you take it twice, because you cannot, if, if machine learning is, is your focus, you, you know, or any forms of uh, of, um, of AI courses, you're, you're going to be using linear algebra in and out. I mean, not just computer vision. There's just too many classes where it's like, what you're going to be learning in, in, in uh, linear algebra is going to be really important. But before you get into linear algebra, people say you need Cal 3, which is useless. You need up to Cal 1, and that's for what you're going to be doing in these courses. Cal 1 uh, um, should be more than enough. But take discrete mathematics or discrete structures. I highly recommend discrete structures because you're seeing the application 
most of us, you know, computer science guys, it's like we're we're very one to one with the uh, with the uh, with the application. If we see where the application goes, we can. It, it's just it. The knowledge goes into our heads easier, right? If I just see the abstract, I mean, I get it. I I understand what the formulas are doing. We're just generalizing these. Uh, these functions, you're seeing an overall, you know, abstract, you know, general idea of what you're going to be applying later on uh, with the specific problems. But for me, it's like when I apply a mathematical concept into code and I see one from one, this line does this. It, it, once I can break it down like that, it really clicks in my head much better. So I would say take discrete structures, then a linear, um, uh, uh, linear algebra, uh, uh, an applications based linear algebra class. Then you can go into theory. It's like when you have a very strong um, um, understanding of, uh, of discrete structures, um, so many of these, there's just so many classes I'm seeing in, in a, at a graduate's level, like right now I'm taking uh, databases. There's so much of set theory is ridiculous, right? And I didn't have too much of a hard time with, uh, um, with discrete structures in part because of that, because it's like I had applied at that point, I had done, um, several years of programming. I've worked with a lot of da uh, database, a lot of um, uh, MySQL kind of um, projects. So when I saw se uh, um, set theory and even kind of what you're doing in like a, uh, um, the predicate calculus and, and other forms of uh, mathematical notations, a lot of it already made sense because of what I already did with, uh, with databases. So of course, the more background you have, the, you know, the better prepared you're gonna be. But to me, discrete structures, linear algebra, oh, and then of course, statistics, you're going to be doing plenty of statistics. And then Cal, what you're gonna be doing in Cal 1, because especially in machine learning, you're gonna see a lot of, um, uh, of, um, of, of derivatives, right? You're gonna be using a lot of uh, um, uh, uh, derivative notation. So you start combining those four, you're gonna be set in so many different areas. I mean, even if you wanna go in towards physics, you're gonna need those, you know, those four anyway, they're gonna be very helpful. Um, and then when it comes to the programming side of it, you know, it, uh, um, computing systems is, is, is gonna be your focus. Well, what exactly w w would you be doing that would be um, helpful? I mean, you, you need whatever programming language you're gonna be using, you're gonna be getting up to date data structures. If you can take advanced data structures, I, I, I recommend it. So up to advanced um, data structures, and then again, discrete, if you take discrete structures, it's technically considered um, programming right there also. Um, depending on where you're going, if you're going straight computing systems, that'll be useful. Other courses, not really, but if, 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 you, took a, um, if you take some kind of assembly um, course, um, where you're literally seeing exactly how memory is being uh, uh, used in these chips and stuff, I mean, just an overview would have been enough really for what I ended up doing. But if, if, um, if your specialization is computing systems, then I, I would recommend some kind of a assembly course also. Um, and then some kind of a algorithms course that a, a lot of the advanced data uh, uh, structures classes for you know, different textbooks that I've seen, that's what they would recommend. Uh, uh, um, anyway, they're going to be uh, the advanced data structure in a lot of courses really has to do with the algorithms and the uh, the the first data structures course covers more of the actual data structures and you know like lists and um, uh, stacks and queues and everything else. So depending on what you're going for, but my recommendation if you just take that whole path right the, the, those four math because you're going to have to take a lot of courses before and then on the uh, on the programming you know, all the way up to advanced data structures, maybe like an uh, uh, um, assembly course, you're gonna be so prepared for any direction you're gonna go. And even if you don't go towards the, you know, uh, the graduate level um, uh, classes later on, like even if that's not your training, if you wanna be just a really solid programmer, it's like that, that's what I would recommend anyway. And you can take any of these classes anyway. You don't even have to go to a, uh, to a college for it. You, you can just take uh, several courses online. But if you have those areas down, most of the work you're going to be doing with, with, uh, in, um, with programming, or they're going to be pulling from those different areas. So those are the overall courses. I might do, depending on uh, if people asking for it, I might do different courses on, I mean, different videos are about um, what areas to kind of focus on, or I might just do straight up tutorials. I'm not, I'm not sure yet, but, but uh, those 
course has really helped me understand a lot of like missing parts that um, that I had. Oh yeah, and of course, <laughs> this is a good idea overall anyway. Um, studying UML, right? It's for what I've seen, most courses uh, don't really offer it too much, right? But the more uh, um, graduate uh, courses I've been taking, the more having just basic understanding of, uh, of how these graphs are working, drawing down, just really visualizing what you're doing before you're even touching, you know, a single line of code seems to be really, really helpful too. So if you can take a couple of, of um, either read a couple of books or watch a couple of video lectures on, on uh, UML nota uh, notation, because that also really helped me uh, plotting and seeing an overview of, uh, of bigger sets of, uh, of, of code. Once you start working on bigger apps, uh, right now I'm developing a game that that's, it's, it, the structure of it starts getting, you know, a little too big. Having, you know, that overall, uh, those overall graphs really does help. So that would be uh, a last one that, that, that I would add would be some form of, uh, of um, light education in UML. You don't have to uh, know all the pieces and, and get really too, too into it, but it is something that's definitely going to be showing up quite a bit. So anyway, hope that helps. And uh, yeah, let me know what other, uh, um, what other resources you guys would uh, uh, find kind of you know, helpful before getting into the program. Have a good one.